Well, thank you so much for having me back for part three of Blocks to Healing, Cleansing Your Home. I wanted to do a quick, a little quick review of the principle that I've introduced each, each meeting. We have to begin with the premise that I asked a question in the very beginning of the first meeting and again last time. If Satan had his way with us, we would all be dead. dead. Mm -hmm. The fact that we're not all dead, and yet some are suffering, some are not, some are suffering more than others, what is happening? Satan's goal is that we would all be suffering and all be dead. How come some are suffering more than others? Well, my search for over 30 years is to find out how can I alleviate suffering? What, is, could, what could be the cause of some of this suffering that goes on all day, every day around the world? And I realized that the only way, there's a principle then that we have to follow. The only way that the enemy can attack us must be if we give him legal ground to do so. He is searching, he searches, the Bible said he goes to and fro, searching the earth, as he says in Job, and he's looking for ways to devour us. He's looking for ways that we slip up, ways that we mess up, that we just through sin or other ways, we invite him into our lives. So he's finding ways to come into our homes. And so, as a quick review, I talked about how one way is through demonic objects. He is searching for ways to attack us. But he gets legal ground that if he's in our home, remember I said, if we go into his home, if we go into temples or other things like this, we go into his territory. How can he get into ours? Well, he finds ways to sneak in. So we learn that demonic objects find a way into our homes and they contaminate. How? We know that the enemy's goal is to kill, steal, and destroy. And he always looks for areas that were the weakest, the most vulnerable, or can cause the most damage. I have found that he affects different people. The same curse or the same spirit can affect every person in a different way. Whatever is their weakest spot, that's what he's going after. Like a wolf going after a little deer, he will find the weakest spot to attack. And so what could he be attacking? How does he cause this damage? I said he could be attacking your health, your finances, your marriage, your family, and your mental health. I said any objects that are images of foreign gods or objects associated with witchcraft or sorcery or astrology are cursed by God and are designated for destruction. This is so important. Once they are cursed by God because they are demonic, they are designated for destruction. He has cast a death sentence on those objects, and this judgment cannot be revoked. Remember I said these objects cannot be cleansed, curses and spirits attached to them cannot be removed because they are demonic and designated for destruction. Doesn't matter if you like these objects, that they're valuable, you're very attached to them or sentimental, you have no authority to change God's verdict on these objects. And so if we keep them, remember I said this is the big danger, not only do we give the enemy legal rights, which is terrifying enough as it is to hurt us, but when we keep these objects designated for destruction, we, Deuteronomy says, we become under that same curse. Now we are designated for the same destruction. Why things are going wrong in your life, you could be designated for destruction. And God, there's nothing God can do about it. You have, you have, you have, it's like holding on to a burning fire. You are going to get burnt. God's nothing I can do. You are the one who picked up those burning coals. You are now going to get burnt like the object you're holding. There is no negotiation in this matter. Everyone comes in and asks me to cast out spirits and curses from their precious objects, and I can't do it. And you can't do it either. I have to begin with a great story. I 
I left you last time, it was the week before Halloween. And a very interesting happened, a very fascinating thing happened during that week. A woman gave me a large pile of Halloween decorations and five boxes of tarot cards. She didn't even realize she had them. There were things that she had acquired and never even used them. But these are some of the most powerful demonic things that you can, you can ever have. When she came come to my, to my office and she had put these things into my car, and all I, I, all I remember was that she had put Halloween decorations in, her, in, in my car. That night I was on my way to, and so I bound the curses and spirits attached to these objects as I would be traveling with them to go and burn them. Well, on the way to burn them, my shoulders, I have to tell you, my shoulders became on fire. They were literally burning, burning like I'd never, I touched them to see if they were on fire. They were so hot. Just, just a little side note. And so I didn't know what that was about. And so I went there to the, to the place of the burning and I began, I, I lit a fire and I began to put these objects on. And they were different figures, they were um, different ghosts and goblins, and there was a big plastic skeleton. And so I set this fire and I began to burn them. And I noticed that the fire was intensely hot. I mean, I was kind of just amazed at how hot this fire was. This strange. As it began to burn, all of a sudden I began hearing screams coming out of the fire. There were wails of agony, of torture. I mean, it was like, what is going on? I mean, it, it was like tortured sounds. People being tortured were coming out of this fire. So my first impression was, wow, it must be, you know how some of these Halloween things have little, little plastic boxes and they have voices in them and they make all these sounds when you walk by. I thought it, it must be that. But I said, these are really, I've never heard anything like this. This is like the real thing. This went on, it was kept going on. I'm thinking, wait a minute. I know what those little cheap plastic boxes. This fire was, it was like a furnace. It was so hot. I'm thinking, there is no way this could be these plastic boxes. So I, want, I said, I'm gonna take a video of this fire. And so, and so people could hear these sounds. And I fumbled and fumbled with my camera. I couldn't find the, I mean, I've taken one million pictures. I couldn't find the photo, to put them open. I couldn't open, I couldn't find video. Finally, I get it going. I reach it up, hit video, hit start. The sound stopped. Just a coincidence. After two minutes of screaming and wails and groans coming out of this fire. And so, but I think, well, maybe I'm down in back, but maybe it was those little sound boxes. And so a few days later, this woman came in and I said, wow, I said, were you trying to frighten every child in the neighborhood with these figures that you had? And she said, what are you talking about? I said, the sounds they were making was horrifying. And she says, none of those figures have sound boxes. I said, whoa. That was real. So it gets even a little better. So that so I sent this picture of the fire because it was a strange fire and was like I say, intensely hot. I sent it to a friend of mine that day. He came back that night and he said, Have you have you taken a look closer look at this fire? So what he had learned was as he as you watch the video, if you pause it anywhere and you kind of blow it up, you will see the most bizarre, beast-like figures in this fire. I had never seen this before. This is not Photoshop, folks. This is, I don't know anybody who can stop a video and anywhere you stop, it's, it's over a minute long, anywhere you stop, you will feel beast-like faces, gargoyles, people in agony screaming, faces very clear in this fire. I'm not saying that suggests that anyone get obsessed with this, but if you, if you 
are interested in something like this and want to see what demons look like and just to give you an idea that they are real and that I'm not doing all this for the, my health, that you can, I will, this video will be on my website and you can go to it and you play it and you, you play with it. You can stop it anywhere you like and you tell me what you see. It's just fascinating, very fascinating. Okay, let's begin. I told you tonight that I would share with you, give you a list of all the objects and how you can, if you decide you want to cleanse your home or your life, that you can search for these objects. I'm going to go through the entire list that I've come up with. I'm sure there's more. And this list, you don't have to worry about taking notes. This list will be on my website, maybe on the Christian Healing Site website. We will post it so you will, you will have a reference point. But I want to share with you how, how I came up with these and how I found, and some stories to go with it, to say that they are, these are my discoveries over 30 years of doing this. These are the things that I've come up with. So we see, first of all, anything related to New Age or witchcraft. Right off the bat, anything related, you are going to find curses or evil spirits or both attached to these things. They are totally demonic. They are not anywhere close to, to of God. So any, what is New Age? Anything that tries to take our focus off of the Creator and put it onto creation. Anything that takes our attention off of God and put it on the creation to distract us from that, that is the New Age movement. It began in the Garden of Eden. It is still the same. There's nothing new about it at all. So things like the book The Secret and many self-help books that teach you what? You have all the power within you that you will ever need to be anything and to do anything you ever wanted to be. You have all the power within you. So there are some good self-help books out there, but there are many, many, I've tested so many, most of them I'm afraid, things like even, you know, Tony Robbins is so big on this. He is filled with curses and spirits. I've tested that website over and over again. People that have come from those talks are filled with curses and spirits and it's causing major, major problems in their lives. People have gone so that anything that, many of these are saying you, you don't, they're not even saying it outright, but they're implying is that you have everything you need. There is no mention of God. And even if there is, he's a side note. He's just a, he's just a little french fry on the side. He's not the item that you go to. He is not your main ticket. Everything is about you. You have this power. Just utilize it, take advantage of it, and you will achieve anything you want. The book, The Secret, has caused more damage, especially, I'm amazed, among Christians. They just don't see it. They are as blind as can be. You know the book, The Secret, I'm talking about? It became a number one bestseller. It is so demonic. This book emphasizes the get-rich-quick scheme. You want something, you can have it. There's no reason. It's all your problem if you don't have it because you're not just, you just send it out to the universe and it will come back to you. Well, that's called the law of attraction and it doesn't work. God's, that's the enemy has the law of attraction. God's law is you pray to me, I will provide it because you're my child. The law of attraction is, we don't need God. You just send that baby out there and it will come back to you, whatever you want. It will come to you to send out those good thoughts. And it will, that house on the lake, that new car, that new relationship you want, it will all come to you. Just send it out there, it will come to you. The problem is, it doesn't come. And, the, and you will receive the exact opposite. When you wait and wait and wait for something and it doesn't come, what begins to happen? You begin to get disappointed, you get discouraged, you have despair, you get hopelessness, you feel good for nothing, you feel, what happened, how come everybody else is getting it but me? And it goes down and down until you're in such depression. You, you, if you use the secret, the book of, this book of attraction, all you will end up with is depression. Every single person I've ever met that used it, I said, how do you feel now? They said, depressed. Because you know why? They didn't get what they wanted. It doesn't work. Anything that glorifies Satan or demons or demonic powers. 
That is going to be our overall theme for tonight. Anything at all that you see that emphasizes Satan, demons, or their powers, which are such a big attraction nowadays, big attraction to these powers. Kids are running into it by droves because it's so exciting. It's so, it seems so interesting. So objects, then many places we can look are objects from New Age stores. Watch, watch, watch for these. These include crystals. How many have heard about crystals? Why are crystals, why are crystals can be demonic? Well, because they, it's a fallacy. But they, when they sell these, they tell you that crystals have power. Any, any of you ever heard that crystals have energy? Right, have you, anybody ever heard that? Right. right. You know how much power they actually have? Zero. It's a stone. It has no power. But here's what's interesting. I know this because my father was in TV and radio. He taught me about how the original ham radio was called a crystal radio. What it means is if you touch a crystal with voltage, it gives off a frequency. And that's how they made the first radio. They needed to make waves. When you touch that voltage to a crystal, it will vibrate at such a high frequency, it gives off a frequency. That's cool, right? But it doesn't have any power of its own. So they said crystals, waves, power, energy, it must have power. And it's a total, total fallacy. So they sell these telling people Crystals have energy. Rub them all over your body. Put them around your home. It will give off energy and life and all kinds of wonderful karma into your home. And it's instantly what? New age. Because it's saying, it's giving, all, it's attributing power to an object and saying, why not invite the Holy Spirit into your home? He can do all those things 100 times better. Right? <coughs> Book, any books on astrology, numerology, horoscopes, sorcery, Reiki, spirit guides, or black magic. Any of these books are all, all demonic and will contain curses or spirits or both. Any question on any of those things that you know about astrology? Again, astrology is turning, focusing on the creation rather than the creator. It's attributing power to the stars that gives me guidance and wisdom and direction. I've had... I'm just gonna ask, so are you saying that crystals can uh, uh, be okay to have, but it's when someone attributes power to them that's coming from the crystal, that it can become a problem? Are no, you, that, to see a crystal problem. is a beautiful stone. Mm -hmm. If you find it and you buy it somewhere, it may be fine. I'm saying, and I, there, there's nothing wrong with a crystal, but if you buy it from a New Age store, because the whole influence of that store, everything in that store becomes contaminated because it's sold with this premise, it has power that will heal you, right? So if you, that crystal is going to be, have curses or spirits, but not, if you find one in some other store somewhere, it's fine. It will be completely fine. And decorate your home with it. Have no problem with that. So again, anything that turns our focus off of God onto the creation, and that's what we believe, you know, that's what astrology is teaching. We don't need God. We're going to get our direction and guides, not from the Holy Spirit, but from the movement of the stars. Stars do not have that wisdom and guidance. That's the Holy Spirit. God created the stars, they could not have. It's like looking at an idol. We made the idol, it cannot have any power. We look for anything, anything like tarot cards, angel cards. These are the cards used by, by fortune tellers, by psychics. They use these cards to predict the future. Now what makes them, what makes them look spiritual or Christian is that they have many of them have angels on them. That's the latest gimmick that they put angels on these cards and they advertise that we're a Christian outfit. You know, we are I'm a Christian psychic, 
and I'm going to search, you know, into your past or whatever. We're going to find these spirit guides and things. But it's Christian, you see, because I'm a Christian, this whole practice is fine. And many, 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 did I say many Christians are going to psychics and thinking there's absolutely no problem. And you say, well, how is that possible? It says clearly in the Bible that psychics were outlawed. They were an abomination to God. How could we, as Christians, go to a psychic? Because they don't call themselves psychics. They call themselves just spiritual guides, right? And they're, and they're going to go and they pray with you, and they say all these things about Jesus, and then they take out their tarot cards, and they predict what's happening. Very, very dangerous. I had one woman who had her son, her son died, and she was grieving over her son because she wasn't sure which, where he went. He had an interesting life, right? And so someone was going to give her a gift of going to a psychic who was a Christian and was going to help. This woman was going to find out where her son is, right? And this woman used tarot cards to determine that her son was stuck. Her son, her son, he hadn't passed over yet because he hadn't forgiven his father. Now this was fascinating because the week before, this boy and I forgave his father for 15 things. There wasn't anything we missed. I know that he forgave his father. Yet this woman used the common thing, oh, he hasn't passed over. Pay her a little more money. Now, I'll, now I will pass him over for you. You see, I knew exactly. I believe I know exactly where this boy went. I knew him, and I know what was going on in his life. And so, they paid her more money, and she did some hula balula prayer, and he passed over. And now the mother is supposed to be in peace. It's, that's what they, and that's what, it's no different. We go to the witch doctors and we want to get answers, we want to get solutions, we want to find peace. Anything but the Holy Spirit, you see? That's the enemy's goal. Okay, any Ouija boards, that's an obvious one. Um, I'm sure all of you have gotten rid of your Ouija boards. Any books of witchcraft, of spells, curses, and hexes. These books, I told you the first, our first meeting, these books are real, they're bona fide, they're out there, and these books of spells are, can be sold, and they are the real deal. They're the ones used by satanic worshipers. They're available for your purchase. Don't go near them. Don't even, read, don't even open them to be curious about them because they're that powerful. Okay? Any questions so far? The problem with Reiki, I'm sure there are different ways to do Reiki, but most people that I've ever interviewed that do Reiki, they are in contact with spirits. They, they don't tell you this, but when you really question them, say, where are you getting your information, your guidance from? Where are you, because they feel they are getting, they're getting, they're feeling this energy and they're guiding you to where they do their, their treatment on you. Where there is nothing wrong with the treatment that they do. It's very powerful, it works, but it's infected. It's contaminated. Ask them, and I did this once with a gal, and she hemmed and hawed every which way and completely denied it. Then I found out throughout another person who had gone to her, oh, totally, she, she's in contact with spirit guides. She wouldn't tell me that she was in contact. She knew I would have, I would have knocked her over. You see? <laughs> and so they believe, the real Rickiest believe they are getting their energy from spirit guides, and that spirit guides them to how to treat you and work on you. So here you have a treatment that is, that is an official treatment that really does scientifically work. It's a, it's a way of massage that does work, but it's ruined. And so 
If you find one who doesn't have really can truthfully tell you they have nothing to do with spirit guides, you should be fine. But the ones I've talked to, oh yes, we of course we get from that's where that's how it works. But many do not want to tell you because they know you're going to poo-poo it and they're going to lose a sale. Okay, any other questions? All right, anything related to American Indian culture? You say, oh, what is that? Look, there are there are heritage. We go every you know we have so much of it is about the American Indian. Well, it's a shame, and I I agree. To the American Indians, everything everything about their spirituality was worshiping gods. There was a god for everything. Mainly, it was. The moon, the sun, animals, they worshipped everything. Everything was something that they worshipped. Remember, it was all about nature. And, and so their spirituality also is, made, is totally, totally demonic. And so after all these years, every single thing I find out that's associated with the American Indian is contaminated and has curses or spirits or both. And I've found, I've tested many, many things like dream catchers, jewelry, clothing, totem poles, and owls. You see, even owls are everywhere. They are these cute little things. I, I've tested children's clothes with cute little owls on them. I've seen Christmas decorations. I, you name it, there are, some people have monster collections of owls. Mm -hmm. You wonder why. Because it's Satan says, let me, let me help you get attracted to this beautiful little figures. They are so cute, right? And so they are everywhere, and they are many, many times, not all the time, but most of the time when I, when I test them, they are filled with curses and spirits because they were heavily worshipped by the Indians. So there's another thing that got ruined, right, was our, was our owls. They were, what were they worshipped for? Wisdom. Right? The owl, and still to this day, we look to the wise owl. And what are we supposed to be looking for for wisdom? What person do we look to? The Holy Spirit. One source of wisdom. No, we don't need owls, but you see how it's been contaminated. As crystals, as owls, they've been contaminated. And so many of their jewelry and clothing, um, one woman brought in, an artifact. It was a, it was a real deal. It was it was a pole. This pole, this um, not like a totem pole. These are also totem poles with all those faces on them. This was a pole that was used by her great great grandfather, who used them in rituals. This thing was nasty. I mean, this thing had skulls hanging off it. Really, you know, the the, uh, the 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 hair hanging down, and bones of animals, and it was feathers. It was the real deal. It was loaded with curses and spirits. I said, get that out of here. Right? <laughs> very, very nasty. All right? This is going to be strange, but um, so I, I, Winnie the Pooh is one of my favorite things. And I've given my grandchildren books and things like that, and they've all got Owl is the wise old owl in the forest. So that's got to go. And every time I test them, they're demonic. Okay. It's sad. I mean, I'm, I love those books. No, I, just, but I, it's, I, I yeah. just want to get them back for my grandkids. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. They're, they're, you're gonna, now that you, you've heard of it, you're going to see that owls are everywhere in this country and massive collections of owls. Also, watch for dream catchers are everywhere. What was you, know, you can see just just the idea of it, right? How I'm going to supernaturally capture my dreams, you know? So I put this over my. It's all superstition. It's all just using another source of power. I am going to capture my dreams with this object. You see why it's demonic, and Satan loves them. So many people have them all over their house as decorations. They have, they have no idea what they got, what they just hung up. So you're, you're seeing the many ways that Satan just waltzes right in and we bring him in to our homes. How do you test the objects? What's the process for determining whether or not there are spirits and curses? Well, you can 
we'll have to talk about that the way that I do it, or you can, you can literally pray to the Holy Spirit and say, and you, you will get a word as you get better at this. You pray, God, you will get a check in your spirit if there is something wrong. If I pick up something, I can tell, there's something wrong with this. I feel it. And you will get better and better as you, and so you pray to the Holy Spirit, God, is there, is there something contaminated in this object? You will feel it. And he will tell you, that's his job, to tell you, and you will know which things are bad. All right, very good question. All right, objects from other countries, especially Haiti, anything that comes from Haiti, I don't care what it is, you know why? That country gave their soul, that to, it, is, it is pronounced, I mean, it's not, it's not a guess. The president of that country, back I think it was in the 50s, he sold that country to Satan in order to get in order that it would replenish. And look at that country now. If you look from an aerial view, you look at Haiti, which is a, looks like a desert wasteland, just completely impoverished. And look right next to the same island. Nobody believes this. Look at the same island, the other half of it, the Dominican Republic, is flourishing, prosperous, green, and lush. There's something to be said about that. But anywhere you find these images, any dragons or snakes, they're all images of Satan. They hide everywhere. There are all kinds of objects, figures, paintings. There are all kinds of furniture. You'll find them on people's arms and tattoos. It's like, what is the deal? Why are we, why are we glorifying snakes and dragons? Well, because Satan wants it that way. He wants to promote, he wants to make look, make, a, make himself look good, get anywhere he can. You'll find them in all kinds of children's books. You'll find them everywhere. The biggest heartbreak was, was Training Your Dragon, right? That uh, the Disney movie, even that one is filled with curse, because no matter what it looks like, as cute as it looks, it's still a dragon. Remember I said, do not think that you're going to find an image of Satan that's in a red suit with the with the with the you know the pink you know, with the red hat on and the horns. If that's the image you have, you'll poo poo it and it's ah that can't be real. No, you want to see what Satan looks like. You stop. You take the fire that I can you can you can look at, and you will see faces that look nothing like that man in the in the cute red suit. It's nothing like that. I'm talking about nasty, nasty, beast-like faces, screaming, tortured faces. So any images of Satan, Buddhas, they're everywhere, right? The cute, lovely Buddha, in every shape and size, every home has to have one. I just find them everywhere. They're just, they're, they, because they're, 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 they're fun, right? They look, they look, they make you happy. They're just joyful, fun, chubby little creatures that make me happy. And so Satan finds a way everywhere with these things to brighten up your day and is causing so many different forms of curses, including sickness and depression and I, all kinds of... I told you a story last time about the girl with all the Buddhas and the depression that she suffered. Right, the girl with the Halloween decorations last time with all the depression she suffered. It affects everyone in their weakest way. Anything like gargoyles or any beast-like figures that you see. One of the things we, we burnt in that fire uh, that I was telling you about last time, um, you know, one that this, I'm sorry, one that I recently burned was pedestals. And on these pedestals, they were made out of, they were beasts, some kind of gargoyle, like beast, like like a, like a lion. And it was the whole lion, but it wasn't a lion, it was a beast. And it had the face of some beast-like creature. And these were pedestals for an entranceway piece. Well, I burnt that last week, and I took a picture of that fire. The figure that, the face that I saw looked just like the face on that Gone on the face of that figure. I was blown away. 
And so it's like you're, when you look at that, that's exactly what Satan wants. When you look at that image that you've got in your home as a piece of furniture, you're actually looking at a demon. And he likes it like that. He's in, he comes right into your home and he's right in the entranceway, making this the first thing you see is this beast like gargoyle. Right? Any festive, not, not all, but any festive and ritual dress from pagan countries, very, very likely. They will, be, they will have curses and spirits because they're used in pagan rituals. These services, these ceremonies are all of different religions. And like when I'm in India, all this festive dress, it's all used for the Hindu, the Hindu dances and rituals. And I'm not bringing any of it back for you because it's all contaminated. Pictures of temples or demonic objects, even in the background. So I found that if you, look in, if you look in books and you see pictures, even pictures of temples and pictures of these different demonic objects, even they can contain, can contain these different um, spirits and curses. So I, I had that experience where I, when I went to India, Samson wanted to take a picture of me. I told you last time how we went into this demonic place of all the marketplace. And they took a picture of me in front of this temple in the background. And even that, when I brought it back, I realized that had curses and spirits attached. I had deleted from my phone. Visiting temples or demonic tourist sites. Remember we talked about how now you are in trouble. Now you are entering into their territory. You are totally vulnerable. I have many people say, oh, I just, I didn't, I didn't go to worship. I just went to visit it. I said, you're not allowed in there. That is demonic. And if you step inside, that's their territory, you are open for attack. It's like, it's like walking into the middle of a rifle range. They have no reason why they don't shoot you, right? You are, you're in their, in their range, and they will, they will attack you. It doesn't matter why you're there, you're in there where you're not supposed to be. And now you are under their jurisdiction. Many rugs from Turkey and India I'm finding to be contaminated with curses or spirits. So my daughter, my daughter complained that she couldn't sleep for three days because her legs ached so much, right? So when we prayed for healing, the Holy Spirit gave us a word of knowledge that it was, we had to look for a rug. I just had a word of knowledge that there, there was a rug by the side of her bed. And she said, yes, she said, I bought a rug. I got it three days ago. I put it by the side of my bed, and I, in the morning I lay down, I sit on, and I do my exercises on this rug. And so we found that it had been made in Turkey. And it had spirits and curses attached to it. She destroyed that rug. Instantly, the pain left. Instantly, and she was all, at first she was like, oh my gosh, I just paid, I just bought that, it was $80, you know, and now I'm not allowed to return it, right? Because now, once you know, that's another side thing, once you know something is contaminated, you have to do what with it? Right. Destroy it. Otherwise, it goes, those curses, because wherever it goes, it doesn't matter where it goes, it's still yours. So if you sell it or you give it away, plus now you're under the conviction, now, I've, now I have something that I know is poison, I'm giving you to drink. How would you feel about that? Right? That's exactly what we're doing. We know it's contaminated, now I'm going to give it to you. Knowing it's going to hurt you, now it's got to say, you're responsible for that person's suffering. And even if you give it away, you still own it. And so those curses stay attached to you. You are the owner of that rug. And so, interesting how God blessed her. He felt her, I mean, she's not the richest girl in the world, right? So we found it interesting. She burns, she burns the rug. The next day, Amazon notified her that the rug was never delivered and refunded her the full $80. <laughs> 
She never called them. She never said, it's done, it's over, right? She gets this, she gets this email. She said, well, we're sorry that your rug was never delivered, and they refunded the money. Right? Only God could do that. <laughs> okay, images of gods and goddesses. These images are everywhere. Yes? I don't only felt from Turkey, rugs from Turkey, and are there particular symbols on the rugs you look for? You would have to pray. No, these other these rugs look totally normal. Now, one's a prayer rug, and the other's a very elaborate. It doesn't have to. We just you have to. You're going to have to pray about God. Is this is there something wrong with this rug? Now, I have to tell you something interesting is that sometimes it's just in the tag. We have found that the tag, so there, there are companies that are demonic, and they buy these things, rugs, towels, and other, other um, things from other different outfits that are not contaminated. And they put their label on it, it's immediately contaminated, because now it's coming from my demonic store, right? We cut the labels off of some things, and they tested fine. The Holy Spirit said they were fine. And so that's just add more to your confusion. So you may you may or may not have to get rid of the whole the whole object. And part of it could be that there are child uh, enslavement uh, camps that are making these objects. So it's really human trafficking situation and a, a power of evil control of the people of that company too. So you know, any big job. So, so any look for any images of images of gods and goddesses. There can be there can be all kinds of shapes and sizes. They can be found anywhere. A woman walks into my office one day, and she says, "I don't know what it is with this Starbucks." She said, "Every time I go to this store." I get this massive headache when I buy this coffee. And she sits down in the chair next to me and she's holding, she's just holding her cup like this. And I look at it and I said, what is that? My eye was directed immediately to that symbol that I had never paid attention to, but God zoned in my eyes on that symbol. And I said, what is that symbol? She said, I don't know. I, she's, she said, I think it's the Statue of Liberty. I said, that's what I always thought. It was just the Statue of Liberty. She said, let's check it out. And so she goes on, goes on her phone, Googles it, and we go to Starbucks, the, the, the origins of Starbucks. And we get, we get a quote from the founder of Starbucks and about the symbol on his cup. You know what that, you know what that image is? It's a siren. The sirens, who knows what the sirens were? Back in Greek mythology, there were sirens. Women on the island attacking Luring the sailors to right. the rocks. These, these gorgeous mermaids would sing out this chant that was so gorgeous that sailors were, it was, could not pass by. They had to turn in and they would really, they had to go towards this beautiful sound. And they would dive overboard and these gorgeous mermaids when they got close would turn into the beasts creatures that they were and they would devour them. And all the ships would float over and they were all crashed on one side. If you ever seen the movie Ulysses and the, the, and the Odyssey. Right? So the symbol of that is that the sirens would look, nobody could pass by. And so we're reading his commentary. He says, the reasons why we chose the sirens, because we wanted our coffee to be so irresistible that you could not pass by without turning in and having our coffee. And it works. He has put a curse on this country, the world, that, that really, really, that symbol is so powerful. There are 13 spirits attached to that cup. 
Not the coffee, you can drink all the coffee you want. Bring your own cup in if you're a Starbucks lover. But I know many people that said, I don't know what it is about Starbucks, I don't even like it, but I have to have it. Many people, and this is over years and years and years I've accumulated these thoughts. I don't know what it is. I can't pass by without turning in. People have said, if I'm driving, they said, don't go that way, don't go past Starbucks. I have, if I see it, I will have to have it. This is a real story, right? Getting on an airplane with people saying, I've got to find a Starbucks. I can't get on this plane without having a Starbucks because they saw the sign, right? It is, it is extremely powerful. The first, star, the first siren they had, the first image, had one tail. That one had seven spirits attached to it. This newer model, which is in the past, I think, five years, has two tails has 13 spears attached to it. That woman's headache opened up a whole new, I never would have guessed it. I didn't, because I didn't know what it was. I've made more people aware of the damage of that symbol. Avoid every image, including Starbucks. All right? All Halloween decorations. What's, what are we celebrating at Halloween? We're celebrating, I made a little list, fear, terror, fright, death, murder, torture, mutilation, pain and suffering, devils and demonic images, witches and witchcraft, and ghosts and goblins. This is what we're sending our kids out to celebrate. Who knows what they're being? I mean, it's, that's isn't. Am I? Did I say anything out of line? Anyway, let's look at who, you know, whichever lawn depicts the most of those wins the prize for the neighborhood. Whoever has the goriest, bloodiest, most demonic-looking lawn wins. That's what we're after. It is. It is immensely insane what we're doing when we celebrate. This is Satan's high feast day of the year. It is, it is his high holiday. And we go out there and we celebrate it with him. It is absolutely beyond bizarre. All right, moving along. Pirates, especially skull and crossbones. Every time, pretty much, whenever I test the pilots, they are, pirates are, Demonics, curses and spirits attached to them. Why? It's not so difficult to understand. What do pirates represent? Murder, death, violence, slavery, stealing, pillage, pillaging, and looting. They represent greed, avarice, and the total devaluing of human life. This is where it begins, folks. Think of what they, that slave is a nothing. It's not human. It was bought and sold as cattle. It began with pirates. This finding out a way to make big money by selling, by determining, they had to deem this individual as less than an animal to do this. You wouldn't buy, you wouldn't treat animals the way they, treat, they treated slaves. And so, every time, every, uh, the, this is, may sound crazy, but I have more people, and, and they, walk, they walk into my office, because it's like, when people are under oppression, and they can't find it, God finds it for them. Why did that woman, she said, I don't know why I stopped at Starbucks. I can tell you at least 25 people that walked in with a Starbucks, probably 50, easy, easy 50, walked in with a Starbucks cup, and they said, I said, what is that? He said, oh, I don't even know why. I never really buy Starbucks, maybe once every couple months. But today I had a craving for it, because God wanted that person to bring it in so that we could find it out. The person comes in one day, and he's got the Pirates shirt on, the baseball team, the Pirates. And on it is a giant skull and crossbone. And this guy has been in a mess he cannot, 
One, just, just one thing, I mean, but we're looking for anything we can, right? Why anything we can to alleviate oppression, sickness, depression, suffering of any kind, we want to, let's get rid of it as much as we can. So this guy walks in with his, his shirt on, and I said, you wear that shirt often? He said, all the time. <laughs> this thing had filled with curses and spirits, and every player on that team is moving around. There's monstrous signs of skull and crossbone. There's one on the field. It's huge. Everyone in that place can be affected by that skull because they're participating in that game. It's hidden everywhere. Everywhere. Who would ever guess? A wonderful baseball team is, is spreading curses all through the TV. Right into your living room, you're getting the skull and crossbone. Okay, many, many Disney movies. This is a surprise for a lot of people, but when you really, as I start to explain a few of them, you'll say, I get it, I get it. Now you have to realize that it's, it's pretty well common knowledge that back in the 50s, Walt Disney sold his soul to Satan. He has said this, that he has sold his soul to Satan to be successful. Do you think Disney World and Disneyland is successful? His products are all over. You can't even measure his success. But what kind of price did he pay? I don't even want to know. But let's look at, if you look at some of his movies, and I've, been, I've tested these over and over and over again, and it always comes up the same. You begin with movies like, I mean, you can begin with Snow White. Who is in Snow White? The Evil Witch. Death. This witch, now that you look at it, this witch is eviler than evil. Why does she have to look so evil and so sinister? And what is the purpose of that poison apple originally? It was to kill. This is a child's movie, right? I watched it when I was this big. It's to kill. And then the good, then the good witch comes with the fairy grandmother, the fairy godmother, changes it so that she'll only go to sleep. Right? Another curse, right? Now you're going to sleep for a hundred years, right? It goes, it gets, it goes from bad to worse. Why does it have to be so evil? Movies like Lilo and Stitch, those cute little characters, right? I was surprised at this one too, but when you really watch it, they are filled with magical powers. Where did you get those powers from? You see, there are only two sources, and you can narrow all this down, there are only two sources of power. Satan and God. It's kind of coming from one or the other. And so, where, did, where does Lionel and Stitch get those magical powers? Not God. That's all I'm saying. It tests bad. The Little Mermaid. What's up with Ursula yeah. being 800 feet tall, right? Why does she have to be so evil? Look at the demonic powers this witch has. Look what she's, the destruction she causes. Just look at the faces of her, of her sharks. Do they look like the face of demons or what? I mean, they are so sinister. And why does it have to be so evil? Every Disney movie has got some kind of problem. It's got these themes of extreme evil. Bambi, I am still devastated to this day from watching Bambi at five years old. What question do you think, what did we all ask when we left that theater? It's the same question I ask today about Disney. I said, Mom, why did they have to shoot the mother? Could, I mean, no, I'm just, am I that wise at five years old? I said, did they really have, they couldn't have done it another way. Did they have to shoot the mother? I said, Mom, this is a kid's movie. She said, I had no idea. I had no idea. Right? I had no idea. Right? This is the first time anybody had seen this thing. We couldn't believe it. So I ask you, where is the mother? Where is the parents? In so Why is there a missing parent in every Disney movie? You think about it. You go through all the movies. One of them is dead, missing, or dies in it. Like the Lion King. Just... Who has to look has to watch the watch the father die falling off that thing? Why? What is the point, right? But it's everywhere, and we just take it for granted. Moana, 
This one, I thought this would be great because it was New Zealand. We spent so much time in New Zealand. It's all about New Zealand. That one is loaded with curses and spirits more than the rest. Why? Because that girl is filled with supernatural powers. It's all about past lives, all about being the redeemer, the chosen one, and all about supernatural powers, right? One of the worst yet, and now it's all over the world, is Frozen. Frozen is the worst yet. And everybody is singing these songs. She's printed on, er, Elsa is on everything you will find. It's all over the world. Because it's just, and everybody knows the songs. It's interesting how I see, I see children this big, they, can't, they couldn't memorize a hymn to save their life. But they know every song in that movie verbatim. And they watch it once, maybe twice. And they know it all, right? It's just fascinating. But that girl has these supernatural powers in her, and she also uses them for evil. I watched that movie. I was, I was, I was horrified. But that how she devastates her loving sister is absolutely traumatizing and tragic. She re and then she rejects everyone and goes off. Here she's supposed to be, going to be the princess, going to run this place, and she runs off to be alone, and she destroys everything in her path. Anybody that's trying to get to her, to, but the main thing is she destroys the relationship with her sister, and the sister is devastated. And this is a fun children's movie. Are we all on drugs? You know what is this? How do we think this is a... And they just rant and rave about it and said, I'm... I came away from that movie totally depressed. It's just all as a counselor, could you imagine? All I feel for is this, this girl needs major therapy. <laughs> <laughs> that girl is, that's the destruction that comes from major rejection. I deal with this a lot, as you can imagine. All right, any questions on that so far? Karen, what about today's, today's electronic games that all ages. It's coming up. Sorry. One of the next things. <laughs> oh my gosh, it is the next thing. Demonic. <laughs> <laughs> it's that prophetic <laughs> gift. <laughs> Demonic and violent video games. Yeah. Movies and music CDs. This is one of the best infiltrators that we have found. They are just flooding into our kids' brains, into adults' brains. I know many, many wives come to me complaining, my husband is addicted to video games. You know how old the husband is? 40, 45, doesn't have to be 12 or 13. These are, they have lived with them since this big, and now they are totally consumed with, with these video games. And it's what's in them, besides the addiction that comes from them, which is totally demonic, it's what's in them. There's so many are so violent. They say there is, there's outstanding numbers of children, by the time they reach the age of 12, have killed millions of people. Millions of characters. They're so used to killing, it has become part of their nature. That's what they're being trained to do. Just death is, you know, it's nothing. And, it's, and they, they get this realization that, well, it's, um, even if they die, I just push restart and they come right back up. So we have devalued even death. Death means, death is meaningless. It's meaningless. Life is even less meaningless because I shoot you with no, no, no conscience whatsoever. I, and many times it's grueling death. I explode you into a million pieces, but it's not a problem, you see, because I just hit restart and shoop, you're back up again and we can play again. We go right back. And so it's very, very true. There was a, a, young, a young boy, he was 15. He had done zillions of hours of these video games. Him and his buddies said, we're gonna go rob 7-Eleven. And they had guns. They, they, they came into the store and this kid instantly pulled out his gun and shot the guy they were just stealing. I mean, they shot, he shot him right between the eyes. 
and they, they when they, they interviewed, they said, "Where did you learn this?" He said, "Video games." He knew it's just it was instinct. He said, but he didn't come back. It was such a revelation to me to read this story that this kid was in shock that he couldn't press restart and have him come back to life. To him, it was all a game. To him, it was all just a game. He had completely devalued life and death. So our, our video games, movies, music CDs, anything that has that has sent these demonic words, satanic, anything of death, murder, violence, they're all demonic. Just look, I tell people, you don't have to know, to, you know, what, even what's inside to listen to the music. Just look at the cover. Well, those, if you've ever looked at these, these beast-like figures, there's one in particular that you'll see a lot, and it has these big horns coming up, and it's got this long face, and it's just like a face of Satan that's very, very commonly portrayed in demonic literature, that's one of the faces that I saw clearly in that fire. I recognized it immediately, two perfectly raised up horns, just as I see in those drawings. I see them on people's shirts, I see them on the videos, on their album covers, I see it a lot and I recognize it. It is, and it was there in the fire. So be careful of all these things, especially Know what our children are watching. Be very just, I want to check that, I want to see it. Do not assume, even if you say, okay, here, you can use my phone, in seconds, they will be off to another site watching something demonic, because the enemy sucks them right in, and they just know exactly how to find it without any other problem. It's absolutely amazing. All right? Fantasy football. This is going to be a big shock to a lot of the men. I had, I had two men in my office at different times in tears when we traced back the cause of their oppression was to fantasy football. Fantasy football, what is the problem with that? Well, it's massive, massive gambling, but even bigger than the, the, than the demon of gambling is obsession. If you know anything about fantasy football, you talk to some of the people, you should interview a few people who have played fantasy football and are into it. It's, it's, you can't even believe it. They begin months in advance in the summer. And they're watching, studying all the players, all the characters, knowing how they're going to vote, how they're going to set up their teams. They build your own teams. And so I interviewed this one fellow who was literally in tears when we, I, I watched him delete them from his phone because we it all went to there was something on his phone that God was leading me to and the only thing he had was his, he said, it's not fantasy football and it absolutely was. So I said, tell me why this has become, how is, how is it obsessive? He said, well, I said, do you find yourself watching any extra games? He said, oh my gosh. He said, now I find that on Sundays, I'm off to the bar watching all the games that I can't get at home. I, I'm, why am I, they're not even my team, but I watch them because I want to learn about what the other players are, right? What is everybody, who's that, what's everybody doing? When I build my team, it's going to be just perfect, right? So now he's fine, he said, I spend hours and hours and hours away from home learning things that I never would have watched those games before. Now that I'm home, I'm spending hours, hours every day with my family. No, I'm researching and planning my strategy. This man's whole world changed when he got rid of fantasy football. I was as shocked as you were. But now when he learned more about it, by listening and asking questions, I said, now I totally get it. Why there was so much obsession. And the, but it's family, steal that time away from the family. Steal that time, whatever we can do to steal that home, to steal, to steal that time. All right, I found even junk mail. This is a warning to everyone. Junk mail is now being loaded with curses and spirits. So you don't even realize it. You don't even, the Holy Spirit has led me to say, check your, check your junk mail. You look through that, there is some nasty stuff. We never looked there because it's junk. 
I'm not talking about trash that you stuff you sent to trash. It's spam. Things that your computer automatically sets to spam. Maybe you got something nasty on your computer and you send it to spam, it doesn't come back. It still goes to spam. Those things are loaded with curses and spirits. I am now in the practice of every few days I delete my junk mail, delete my spam, because they're hiding in there. Any way he can sneak in, he will try to get in. Any form of pornography, pictures, movies, videos, it is totally demonic. Satan is, is just roaming in these areas, and he is trying to find ways to infiltrate into our lives through pornography. It is very, very powerful, loaded with curses and spirits. Spirits mainly, as you can guess, spirits of lust, spirits of ungodly sexual desire. Go on and on. Fantasy. Oh, imagine the fantasy that goes on with looking at pornography. Right? It is Satan is just having a field day with with us with pornography. Men and women alike are being consumed with searching in pornography. Think, well, it's just me. I'm not affecting anyone. It's just me in my closet looking at this. No, it destroys, it contaminates the whole family. There is not a wife that I met, not one in 30 years, whose husband was addicted to pornography that she didn't feel like he was in an affair. That, because that's exactly what it is. There are demonic figures, there are spirits of affair, sexual affairs, spirits of detachment, it's all, they're loaded. And there is not a wife that has not felt it. She said, I knew it, I knew it months before I found out. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Because, they, because those spirits are radiating, all those emotions are radiating, the curses are radiating all through the family, and everyone is being affected. I was working at a customer's home. To show you, give an idea how, how powerful they can be. I was working this customer's home. It was a Saturday afternoon. I was alone and I was in his bedroom installing a TV unit. And the house was empty and it was very quiet. While I'm working, I felt the most bizarre sexual feelings come over me. I'm working, I'm building a unit, I'm fully concentrated on this unit, and I'm getting sexual desires, weird ones, very strange, um, erotic sexual desires. And I'm like, what is going on, right? So, I'm, look, I'm, just, I, I'm just kind of sitting there looking, what is, what is happening? And I felt I was literally being pulled and led, literally being pulled and led to a shelf on this side of the room. There was a bookcase. And I reached up, first one, I reached up and I grabbed the book. I have no idea what I'm doing. I just, like a robot, I grabbed this book and I pulled it out. And I looked at it and I opened it it was a fake book. Inside was an X-rated video. Blew me away. I couldn't get out of there fast enough. I said, this thing is so, it's alive. It is so, this thing was so real. It literally could, that's how, you wonder, how does it lure me? How do I know which, which video to buy, which game to buy, which, which Disney movie, which whatever, which CD to buy, you're being sucked in. And I lived it. I witnessed it. You couldn't have convinced me. You'd probably say, I don't believe that story. I wouldn't blame you a bit. But I'm telling you, I was there. That, that thought came. First came the feelings, came the desire. And I'm not, I'm not watching anything. It's a, I'm installing a unit. I'm not thinking about anything. And I've got these strange desires out of nowhere. right? And I was led to that book. And it was the first try. I knew exactly which book to pull out. Food for thought. Be careful what we're being tempted with, what we're being lured to. Really check, ask the Holy Spirit to check everything that is in your life. All right? Another very, very powerful source of curses and spirits, or both, 
this is going to be a shock to many, many of you, is Harry Potter. There are so many Harry Potter lovers in this world, I'm amazed. I'm amazed how many grown men have burst into tears in my office when they found out that Harry Potter is demonic. You say, Harry Potter is just a great, fun, fanciful story. Harry Potter is one of the most loaded books of literature of, of curses and spirits that I've found yet. It is so filled with fantasy, witchcraft, supernatural powers, sorcery, and black magic. It is every scene in the movie has, has great amounts of all this included. Realize, and this is what, if you're not, if you're not convinced, that when I tell you this statement, you may, you may understand. What I've learned as I researched that, that those books is that every spell, curse, and hex used in these stories are from the original satanic book of spells. When you listen to these, when you read these books and listen to these, watch the movie, and listen to these curses, these curses are being spoken over you. And they are coming right into you, they're coming right into your home. You are receiving bona fide curses, hexes, and spells from the, written from the original, taken from the original book of spells. These are satanic books. And in my first, in my first talk, I talked about how I tried to burn one of these books, and I said how it would not burn. These books are extremely powerful and extremely demonic. Almost done. Anything related to Freemasonry and other cults. Cults are demonic. Freemasonry is a cult. It is completely demonic. Any form of, you were going to find tattoos. Where can they hide? Tattoos of demonic images. So any images of demons, dragons, snakes, beast-like creatures, and any images glorifying Satan. They all contain curses and spirits. One last story. My brother sent me a picture. Even He just sent me a picture of my nephew's girlfriend. Well, she was going to be clever, and for Halloween, she, she dressed her whole face as like a skull, black and white, all dressed, looking in makeup, the scary face of a skull. And that's her new look. And she, was going to, she wasn't just for Halloween, she, was going to, she looks like that for a period of time. And so my brother sends me this, bit, this picture, and I look at it, and I made a joke back saying, oh, is that... Is that Sarah's new look? She's, is, she, oh, is, she, is she posing for the latest Halloween movie or something like that, right? And we laughed about it. And, and I just put the phone down. As I'm working at my computer, and it was like 6 o'clock at night, I noticed that I began to feel really weird inside. My stomach started to move around, and I was feeling very, very uneasy, jittery, and very sick feeling. And so, so I, I went, I said, I'm just going to go down to the shop and work for a bit. So I went downstairs and I'm working. That'll shake it. I just shake it off, and nothing left. Nothing left. And so, finally, uh, hours later, I just I went home and I sat down on the couch and I said, "This is something demonic." I just felt that this this has to be something demonic. And so I prayed to God, God, I'm not going to bed until you tell me what is causing this sick, strange feeling. It's very uneasy, very uncomfortable, and very sickly. What is causing it? And I instantly had a picture of her face on my phone. I said, you got to be kidding. So I opened my phone. I deleted the picture. The pain instantly left. These things are real. These things are absolutely real. I have many, many more stories. You've heard plenty. Pray to the Holy Spirit to guide you. When you cleanse your home, the healing can be huge. Because as much damage as they cause, God wants to bring about a healing that is hundreds of times more powerful. He will bless your efforts to heal your home. You will find relief in, from your finances, from your health, from your the, relationships, 
Every area of your life that's been attacked by the enemy, God will bless and anoint. If you're obedient, you destroy objects. Keep Satan out of your home. Bring God in as much as you possibly can. God bless you. Thank you. Since you're around demonic spirits all the time, you obviously need to do a lot to prepare yourself. Uh, uh, to, to, you know, and I know we're all supposed to pray for protection in, in general every day, but I'm just wondering what, in addition, do you do since you're really on the front lines fighting these fighting uh, Satan's. I say one prayer of protection every morning on the way to work. I just pray for God's pr protection, and it works. Are we saying together before it leaves the house? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. It does. It's not a big fancy prayer. It's just God. I, I actually pray. I pray the prayer of Jabez, which included in that one of the elements is praying for God's protection mm -hmm. against all evil, mm -hmm. and He honors that. Works for Jabez. It works for me. These items have to be destroyed by fire. You can't just yes. get rid of them. They have yes. to be burned. That's, which is always a challenge in this town, right? I was going to say, I don't know where we're going to work. Good evening, guys. I'm just, uh, I'm just, thank you, Gary, for, uh, for coming and, and sharing with us. Uh, I kept hearing Holy Spirit. I heard you saying people were trying to receive power from other objects, whether it be crystals or, or certain meetings and certain shops and, and other things, and you see it in the in the Disney movies, and, and it's either darkness or light. And so the one who is our comforter, who heals anxiety, the one who heals teeth pain, the living God, the God who's here is his Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus made a way. He made the way to the Father. And not only did he die for our sins, but he ascended and sat down and sent the promise. So he sent the Holy Spirit. He's available to anybody who may be seeking anything. The answer is in him. He's the one who comes in Jesus' name. And so we pray to Jesus. Holy Spirit is the one who can lead to objects or certain things that are in our house. So we don't, it doesn't necessarily have to land on the list from what you're saying, right? So it could be the rug or it could be the tag. Well, how do we identify that? Well, the Spirit comes in the name of Jesus and he leads us and guides us and teaches us and he leads us to all truth. And so I have an owl on my Christmas tree. I don't know if the Christmas tree is more cursed than the owl. I, from the things I hear, some people say, you know, can put Christmas trees up and all this different stuff. So, so as I go home, I'm going to pray, Lord, is this owl cursed? Because it's cute. It's a pine cone. It's a, it's a pine cone that somebody decorated with the little eyes on it, and it hangs, and I, I really like it. <laughs> but, uh, it will burn. But I don't like it that much. It will burn. Right. <laughs> And so what I'm hearing is, is if anybody's feeling bored as a Christian or just, or just dragging along or tired or beat down or concerned and worried over what's going to happen in January and all these different time frames that we like to set, it, the Holy Spirit wants you to know that he's available, that he's here, that he's ever present in times of trouble. He is always available in the car when we pray the prayer of protection. You know, he's the one who comes and protects us. He's our rear guard. He also goes before us so that we have nothing to fear. And so I just pray for, for an awareness of his presence, an awareness of his, his here. And, he, and it's not always seeking. And where are you? Where are you? He's here. He's available. He's a person. He, he wants you to experience his tangible presence even right now. I just, I feel like a warmth is coming even though there's a coolness in here. Lord, I thank you. Holy Spirit, for fresh fire to fall and rest upon every single person here that's willing and open to receive from you. Lord, I thank you that you come with healing. Holy Spirit, I thank you that, you're, that you are healing teeth right now. That if there's pain or an abscess or an infection in a tooth that's causing headaches or anything else, Lord, I pray that you just heal it, restore it, and make it brand new, God. I thank you for creative miracles, Lord God, inside of people's bodies tonight, Lord. I pray for John, Lord. I pray that this cancer will be completely gone, that he'll be healed, renewed, and made stronger than ever. Lord, I thank you that he has a joy in him that cannot be taken away. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for Sue. I thank you for the words of knowledge that you give her for the prophetic gifting on her life, God. And I pray for an increase for her by the power of your spirit. God, I pray that she walk in compassion, Lord God, that she's moved with compassion, Lord God, and that you heal many people through her as you lead her to pray with others and for others. And when there's space 
between them where she can't get to them. Lord, I thank you that you there is no space in your spirit, Lord. And I thank you for that, Jesus. I thank you for the anointed words, Lord. I thank you for your protection over Gary. And I had a question. What if the people live in the country where the cursed objects are coming out of? So, so India, for instance, where you're saying these rugs happen. I mean, they're going to be surrounded by so many cursed objects. Like, so what does Samson do? And is it the same thing that he prays in the spirit? And is this a cursed object in my land? And like, how do they identify when they're in a country that's completely surrounded by so many, you know, cultic practices and, and things? goal is to educate them and to teach them to remove those objects from their from their homes. Yeah. The most common object in India is newspapers. Remember I said the first time, every person I com comes up for prayer complains of body pain. And I believe that's what it's from. Every home has newspapers that are loaded with, with images of idols. That was every page has idols and gods and goddesses on them. And they're in every home is infected and everyone has body pain. And so now I'm teaching people we've got to cleanse the homes of these newspapers. That's the first one. They come in on boxes. They, being aware of them will be the way. And so Awareness. now, once they're, we travel, but when we travel all through India, we're protected. We're not participating. We're not going into temples. We're not. We're not joining in. We're just traveling through as missionaries. Yeah. It doesn't touch us. Right. But I mean, Jesus, he was on the outskirts of the town. You know, he was dwelling with the sinners, right? The people that were outcast and the ones who were doing tarot cards and right. all that stuff. And he's like, send those people outside the camp. And they like, where's Jesus? And he's outside the camp amidst sinners. You know, he's the anointed one, right? And so are we now. Yeah. And so that's... It's not, if we go into their homes, we're not affected. Because we're not going in there to... There's some homes they go into, they have, they have Hindu gods in the closet. Yeah. We know they're there, but they can't attack us because we're there for, we're under the anointing. Yeah, we bring the light. You know, we're the light bearers into the darkness, and light dispels darkness, right? So the light comes, darkness flees. Yeah, that's it. Good. Yeah, amen. Will you lead us in a prayer against COVID? I would love to lead us in a prayer against COVID. And I'd also like to make an invitation for anybody who wants to receive healing prayer tonight or when we're talking about Holy Spirit and the unction that Gary's talking about on the inside where he says, you know, something feels off about this object or something feels off about this situation or about this environment. You say, you know, I don't, I don't never really experience the direction like that from God. And he did, you know, he desires that relationship. And I'm saying he's here and, you know, I believe that he can give me this fire and, that I, and I know he's near, but I don't necessarily don't know. Then I want to open up invitation for prayer to, to laying on of hands if you're comfortable or maybe not even in, at a distance and just pray for a fresh baptism in the Holy Spirit to pray for, for that for you tonight. And if there's any other healing needs, we can divide up into certain sections. Um, uh, so, Lord, I, I thank you that you are bigger than COVID-19. I thank you that you're bigger than cancer. Lord, I thank you that you are guiding the hands of many, many, many very intelligent scientists, God, but I thank you for wisdom and knowledge, Lord, not from the owl. The owl doesn't give wisdom, you do, Lord. So I thank you, Lord, that you even give our now president, and if he continues to be our president, and the new president, whoever you're placing in power over this nation, Lord God, I pray for a radical encounter with you and your spirit. I pray over all the pharmaceutical companies, God. I know that a lot of them are under attack, and a lot of those pharmaceuticals cause more sickness than they do good, Lord, but I pray for a sanctification of all medications, God, that there'll be no side effects from them, God, that they will only bring healing, God. I pray, Lord God, that you stop the wiles of the enemy or any kind of deception or any kind of manipulation in the system uh, for any opportunistic moment where they're trying to take advantage or to pull wool over our eyes, God. Give us eyes to see very clearly in this time, God. Let us just not just fall right into any kind of conspiracy theory, Lord, but let us know when there is conspiracy. Let us know when there are things that are going against us, God. Let us be wise as serpents in this time, Lord God. We are your sheep. Your word says that we will hear your voice and we will know it and we will follow you, God. So I pray to guide us and lead us in this time, Lord. I also pray for a safety and protection. You see, protect us in the dark places, Lord. I know that you will protect us from all sickness, Lord. And we declare and decree Psalm 91 over all of our family members that no sickness nor plague will come out of thy dwelling. Lord, I'm rejoicing in the in the healing of the elder of one of my church members, God. I thank you that Tony is home, God. I thank you that you took him off the respirator, that you healed him, and he's restored back in his home for Christmas, Lord, as we celebrate your birthday in this country, Lord Jesus. 
I thank you that COVID is, is on its way out, Lord, whether that be coming from vaccine or from, or from group immunity or just by the hand of God moving upon this nation. And we rejoice in it, Lord, that it will be gone off of the face of this earth. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Bless you guys so much. Have a great evening.